Today on How to Drink, I'm doing something that I've never done before. I'm gonna make no ABV cocktails that are good. <laughs> There's a million reasons why people are interested in non-alcoholic cocktails. Certainly bars around the country are selling them. Actually, bars are dedicating themselves to specializing in it. Product categories have emerged to create this stuff. I am not personally a guy who goes for the non-alcoholic cocktails. I don't reach for them. I'm gonna see if I can convince myself I'm gonna find out that these things are worth the hype. We're gonna look at stuff that's really supposed to be whiskey or gin or rum, tequila, apparently vodka aperitifs, you know, that kind of stuff, and see if I can make a cocktail with it. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit, just briefly, about some ready-to-drink non-alcoholic alternatives that you can have. And then I'm gonna try to invent like cocktails that are non-alcoholic and see if we can make something original that will work. I don't have anything written for that. It's just, we're gonna workshop it and see what happens. With that, we should just start testing these and seeing if they work. And one thing about this non-alcoholic stuff one, there'll be some sediments in there, right? Because it just it's made with a different process. It doesn't get its flavors from the same kind of places. Like the other thing is it will not last. For example, this one, good for six months after opening. Just something to be aware of with this stuff. And also too, why these particular bottles? That really comes down to like how things seemed rated. This isn't like a, an, a review of all the non-alcoholic whiskeys, for example. We're just looking for the ones that are supposed to be the best. If this does well, maybe we'll break all of that down. We did review the seed lip line like two years ago. They're supposed to be like new concoctions. I was not impressed with them, especially at the price point that they were at. If you want to check that out, it's up here, but I, I can't recommend that as a buy. So let's see how Ritual non-alcoholic whiskey shakes out. It smells a little bit like cinnamon toast. Here we go. It's a little thick too. Whiskey is uh, airless. Anything with alcohol in it, it really just can't hold air bubbles in it. Moonshiners and stuff will shake it up in a jar and see how quick the bubbles disappear and they can kind of gauge the proof based on that. Let's see how she is. It doesn't really taste on my tongue the way a whiskey or a bourbon does. I taste it more here at the back of my mouth and in my throat. It's like some minty notes, a lot of cinnamon notes. Very brief touch of smoke, char, but they're not aging it in a barrel, they're simulating that because if we just determined you can't have this open for more than six months or it goes bad. And then it does burn your throat, which <laughs> I think they're trying to simulate whiskey burn with that and they're doing it with peppercorns. It's pretty clear they can say peppercorn. On it. I kind of wish that they hadn't, but that is not the thing I associate with whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey doesn't burn my throat. <laughs> I almost think this is closer to a pepper liqueur than a whiskey. I love nosing a whiskey, especially after it's opened up a little bit and some of the ethanol vapors have floated away. Oh, God, I hate to say this. It smells like cinnamon Play-Doh or like French toast. Not a bad smell. The Play-Doh is a bit off-putting. I see. <laughs> Yeah, they're going for the throat feel is what they're going for. You smell the Play-Doh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's taste all of these and then see what we can do as far as cocktails with them. Let's try this gin alternative. I think a gin alternative is going to be a lot easier to get right than a whiskey alternative. I think whiskey is probably the hardest one to pull off. Yeah. Okay, let's see if this is a gin alternative. Still has that thick pour, it seems like glycolated. For me, this is not a very satisfying pour. I'm a little, uh, it puts me off here to go glug, 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 glug. <laughs> oh God, it does, it just. <laughs> Something about the way it looks at the glass, the refractive index of it, like the surface tension of it, the way it swirls around is off-putting. Whoa, cutting the lawn right away. It is fresh cut grass on the nose and a little bit of, um, like lime. Wow, I thought gin would be easier to get. That's not gin. Tastes like skunky weed. This might be one of Ritual's things is to try to simulate mouth burn, throat burn, because it's got that same exact peppery thing happening in there. In its flavor evolution and profile, there's a whole section that's just like, uh, there should be something here. There should be some flavors here as just missing. That's like kind of the way it rides out. There's like a kind of a mildewy laundry thing in there at the end. I'm not convinced by this one at all. 
Let me try the Monday. Monday was really well reviewed as well. More expensive though. Is it? Do you have to rate like the price? $39. This is like $40. Wow. That's why they got that fancy label. It is a beautiful label. It is really pretty, <laughs> yeah. It's not at all clear, right? Like the other one is significantly more clear, but let's see how this is. I get like weak lime water that turns semi-malty. And then it becomes kind of bitter. Like the other one had a mildewy laundry thing. This one hasn't turned way up. It's not good on its own. It gives you a bad aftertaste. But uh, I think mixed, this one might be more successful more than the other. For the love of God, bring me a bottle of gin. Okay, sure, yeah, bowling and birch. And look at how lovely that pour is. There's no glug, glug, glug. It doesn't feel like syrup. It is crystal clear. Immediate, there's no delay. The volume of the flavor doesn't ramp up with a real spirit. It hits your mouth, boom! You taste it that instant. I'm glad we did this because I wasn't putting my finger on that. This stuff is like, <laughs> comes in very weak. Gin, whiskey, rum. It, the minute your mouth touches it, you, your whole apparatus is like alive with the flavors. It hits your entire nasal cavity. Every part of you is working on that and responding to it, but you don't get that here at all. Like this is like drinking flavored water, but like I, there's many waters I've had that were flavored in more pleasant ways. All right, let's try the tequila alternative. They might convince me here. Tequila is the spirit I have probably the least awareness of. Another glug glug. The liquor replacement made for margaritas with the grassy body and clean fire of tequila without the alcohol or calories. For when you're driving, dieting, training, making a baby, taking a break, staying up late, getting up early, or just having stuff to do. That's actually a really good copy. I wish I had used that for the open of my episode. Good for them. Best enjoyed in cocktail substitute one to one. Okay, well that's good to know. Do they say that on the other ones? Best used in cocktails. All right, so there are, Ritual is saying that these are better in a cocktail. I'm kind of cheating them. Again, no. It has a late arriving note that is distantly tequila adjacent. You make a margarita with this, the lime and the simple are probably gonna be the only thing you taste. All right, my beloved rum. <laughs> this is gonna be brutal. <laughs> it's actually got the most satisfying pour. It pours less like glug glug juice than anything else. It looks I'd... pretty rummy. Enjoy the ritual without the alcohol. Oh, I get it. That's why I like the ritual. Warm vanilla toasted spice and the velvety decadence of dark rum without the alcohol or calories. So whether great cocktail. At long last, we're gonna try this here. Rum, not rum. It tastes almost like a cocktail. It doesn't taste like rum. It's weird. This one honestly has more of the parts of rum than the other ones had their parts of their spirits to me. It's just like they're all in the wrong order. Oddly, it almost reminds me of a Mai Tai. <laughs> it is then nothing like a Mai Tai, but it does feel like there's lime in it. Honestly, this one's at least pleasant to drink. I, I, I don't dislike the flavor of it, but it's not rum. Now we're up to Strick, not vodka. I'm so curious. About this. I am deeply curious. I don't know what this is. Here we go. That is terrible. Oh man, I thought it was bad at the beginning. It gets so much worse. It starts out, man, tasting like uh, licking a cardboard box. And then it just straight up turns into like melting plastic. That is ghastly. Holy shit. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Dude. This is real bad shit. Like, give it to your kids. Oh, you're curious about alcohol? This is <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could do that. Kids like throw up. Oh, that's, I don't, yeah, why does that exist? It doesn't even do the mouth burn thing. This is aperitif dry. So this is supposed to be like a dry vermouth, they're saying. Here we go, uh, apparently dry vermouth. Closer than the other ones. 
You got a bottle of dry vermouth back there? Because maybe I'm losing my mind. Okay, we got a little dolan. Yeah, I'm crazy. This is delicious. This is unbelievably good. It's not often that I drink dry vermouth. That is very nice. <laughs> It reminds me of stepping into a, like a, um, a dry sauna. Uh, let's take a look at Liars Italian Spritz. I'm not really clear if this is meant to be a stand-in for a complete spritz or if this is meant to be like a stand-in for Campari. I kind of hope it's the latter. It certainly looks like Campari, but Campari is basically dye. So, so here we go, Italian Spritz. It's not too, too, too far off from Aperol. It's very sweet. It has a lot of cinnamon in it. It's not Campari. It's more Aperol than, and it does have a nice bitter finish. It's like between Aperol and Campari. This is by far the best one. Right after this, we're gonna get back into here and making some cocktails with this stuff. It'll be fun to find out, I promise. It'll be fun to find out. Right after this, we'll see if we can make cocktails with this stuff. Now we're back, I do just wanna talk briefly about these. And these are just some examples that I had lying around. There's a whole category of soft drinks out there beyond Coke and Pepsi and Sprite. Some of these are Italian style soft drinks, which can be very bitter, much more elevated, and frankly are probably gonna be great cocktail replacements in their own right. For many, many years before the non-alcoholic cocktail thing took off, when you went out to even the best bars in the city or you go to PDT or Attaboy, well Attaboy now, or Employees Only famously, their two non-alcoholic offerings were going to be house-made outstanding ginger beers and house-made outstanding Shirley Temples, which when you make them with homemade grenadine are, if you have guests who are coming over that can't drink, these are the things I would stock, much better than standard soft drinks. Um, and of course, bitters and soda, which honestly uh, is probably the best non-alcoholic cocktail there is going. Just take some Angostura bitters, throw it in soda. Is Angostura alcoholic? Yeah, but if you put a few drops, even like 10 of them, into a glass of seltzer, which is what I drink a lot when I'm not drinking, you drop that ABV way below 1%, and anything below 1% is considered non-alcoholic. So it's fine for you know pregnant persons and driving persons, and you will not get drunk on it. Okay, here we go. These are just bitters and soda. They're very, very dry. They're very, very bitter. They're very gentian. And that's exactly what it says, made of gentian tincture. These are fine. I like the Angostura and soda a little bit. It moves you know, stuff. You know, you got your ginger beers like Reed's, and there's a lot of these. It's delicious. It's hot and spicy. It's sweet. Yeah, you talk about a vodka mule, like a vodka mule, you don't taste anything but the ginger beer anyway. So that's a cocktail right there, right? <laughs> you got your sand bitter. Those are fantastic. I don't think I've ever had those before, honestly. That's really good. That tastes like Campari. Why can't this taste like that? I don't get it. You wanna grab the other one of these that's in the bucket? Cause it's like really good. Yeah, I'm gonna go get you that Angostura. When I worked with Angostura many years ago, they sent me like a crate of these. Uh, this is really cool. I think they might be calling it Angostura Chill now. It's lemon, lime, and bitters. It is kind of like their twist on like a Sprite or something. It's a little sweeter. I mean, it's a lot sweeter than some of these other options. It's a delightful thing. Fine alternative to alcohol. I don't know if I've ever tried this one. Arancata Rosa Organic. It reminds me of a mimosa a lot. And then this is uh, Chinotos will be another bitter soda. Chinotos are like uh, bitter oranges, if I'm not mistaken. It's got a lovely flavor. Mm. It's got a kind of a dark, it does have a dark flavor. It kind of is like coffee chocolatey or something. Vanilla, vanilla and orange chocolate kind of thing happening. That's wonderful. All right, well, I just wanted to get those out of the way and talk about those. There's a lot of really great alternatives to a cocktail right here in these cans. You don't need to purr through the nose for this stuff. Definitely cannot endorse. As of yet, let's see how they mix, which is what we're gonna do right now. So let's start with our whiskey alternative. Let's see if we can make any decent whiskey cocktails with this. I know we're not gonna make an old fashioned with it. It's just, well, there's no reason to even attempt it. Let's move right along to a whiskey sour. <laughs> it 
so syrupy. Anything with an egg white, you get a dry shake. So hopefully this drink actually is a whiskey sour. Very frothy in there. When, let's throw some ice in there and see if the ice brings the foam down. Oh, wow. That is very foamy. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's ridiculous. So here we go. This is a ritual whiskey sour. It's very vanilla. It's not unenjoyable. It's a lot of money for this drink. It's a lot of work, you know? The simple and lemon do, of course they're gonna hit that note because simple and lemon combine, that makes that whiskey, whiskey sour note. It's got the texture because I did the egg white. I like all of that. It is missing the whiskey. Or it actually has lost all of that like throat burnery. I guess I was curious if it had any of that left in it. It tastes much sweeter. Yeah, it just tastes very sweet. very sweet. Yeah. You can taste the ritual non-alcoholic whiskey. So I wouldn't say that you don't need it in there, but at the same time, it's like it hasn't been transformed into something that suddenly tastes like whiskey. Regardless, I would dress this with some bitters because they're effectively non-alcoholic anyway, and I like bitters on... Well, in the amounts that you're using. Absolutely. I mean, you could use a lot of bitters and still have it be... Bitters make everything better. It's nice. I'll tell you what, if I was gonna make a Negroni, I would, fine, I'll use your gin. For the vermouth, I would actually use this. I think that's probably a little closer. I'm gonna ditch that and I will use the sand bitter. I think that the experiment of just making a straight whiskey sour off of the whiskey has kind of derailed me a little bit because I am now 100% certain that just taking these as one-to-one -one replacements for mix up, like just saying, oh, I'm gonna make a martini. You will hate that martini. So I'm gonna do an ounce of our fake gin. An ounce of our ritual rum. It's closer to formula antica than anything else. An ounce of sand bitter, which is carbonated, but probably won't matter because by the time I'm done making this drink, it won't be carbonated. I'm gonna do a couple dashes of Angostura orange bitters. These are 28% alcohol, but I'm very comfortable calling this a non-alcoholic drink anyway. Stir that up. Twist of orange, put it in there, perch it, and there we have Maybe a Negroni? It, it's got this weird peppery burn. It has some vanilla notes. It does not have any, really honestly, of the bitterness of a Negroni. It just falls so far short of Campari. I would be really hard pressed to call that a Negroni. Try it out. No, that's not, yeah, no. Trying the, the bitter aperitif stuff, the Italian stuff, I, like that and some San Pellegrino and a little bit of sweetener, like that would be closer than what we made. That and what? That and some San Pellegrino, maybe a little bit of sweetener. You mean San Bitter. San Bitter, that's, yeah. I don't think you need any sweetener. Probably not, no. And, and a twist of orange, that's gonna be it. closer to a Negroni, I think. It's okay to have a fizzy Negroni. Yeah, Honestly. there you go, it's a Spagliato. <laughs> yeah, if we had a fizzy Negroni, that'd be kind of fun. I'm just gonna do 50-50, or thereabouts. Be more fun if they tasted good. That is closer. That's actually not that bad. Good call, Meredith. A sweeter for sure. That combo does add up to that, the Campari aftertaste with the volume turned down. It's actually, not bad. I don't know what it would be. It's like a little dash of Angostura bitter. It's like a fucking meme. We should put that on a shirt. But I wonder how it would be with a dash of Angostura bitters. <laughs> that is a good shirt. That's a good pen. Take it or leave it. I like it. It's a subtle improvement. That's and actually, true. there is another question here, which is how much different does this taste from this? Mm, just get a bottle of that, put it over ice. I think this is better. I think we've actually taken the bitterness and turned it down. 
Oh, interesting. One more to see if any of these just shake themselves up into a drink or if, cause they don't give you like a recipe. They don't tell you like, but make it this way. Like they just say, use it in a margarita, use it in a whatever. We're gonna do two ounces of fake tequila. One ounce of lime juice. I wonder what am I gonna use for orange curacao because I typically use orange curacao in one of these. I hadn't thought about that until this very moment. It's gonna be very sweet, I think. I'm gonna rim this glass with some salt. Why not use some fancy salt? Okay, paint this glass. Drink is ready to shake. Uh, no, I am gonna put in a couple dashes of Angostura orange bitters. Three of those, it looks like. Then I'm gonna take this lemon and I am going to peel more or less the whole thing. Drop that right into my drink. Muddle that lemon peel. I'm assuming that we already have our sweetness. Shake it, see what happens this time. Kind of looks like a margarita. That's gonna look like one, yeah. <laughs> Just kind of dreading it. Let's see how it is uh, without the salt. Nope. Salt, please. A lot of people add sweetness to their margaritas. I didn't think that one, I know the rum one tasted sweet. I didn't think that this one tasted very sweet. It tastes like burning plastic. I'm never gonna fix that. Like that is bad. I don't know, these are a skip. You're gonna come up with more interesting things, not using them. I'm gonna try to do that off the cuff without any preparation right after this. I'm gonna challenge myself to come up with three good non-alcoholic cocktails that are not simply sugar, water, and soda, although one of them might be sugar, water, and soda plus. Not simply bitters and soda, uh, something else, something more. I don't know exactly what those things are just yet. I'm gonna say that I can use bitters. I would say even a rinse of absinthe would be fine. I wanna work with these sodas because I think that these can be really good, powerful starting places as if they were spirits. They're much more interesting than those things. I swear to you, they are. I think that we should abandon the idea of attempting to simulate some existing cocktail. Finding new grounds upon which to build an edifice of non-alcoholic cocktails. That's what we're gonna try to do here today. I don't know what this is called yet, but we're gonna need some mint, and this mint is getting a little long in the tooth. Don't mind it, we're gonna look for some, some of the best pieces here. I'm gonna put some fresh mint in there. Great, beautiful mint. An ounce of lime juice. Hmm, let me think. I don't know what you're putting in it. I don't know yet either. I'm gonna do like four dashes of Angostura bitters. I'm gonna muddle what we have in there. I was gonna say I can do this with the Chinola. I think that'd be really good and interesting to top it from here with Chinola, I mean, some ice as well. But in the interest of working with non-purchased in like ingredients instead of like products, we'll try it a different way. So we're gonna do a half an ounce of simple. I'm gonna pull a channel knife pull off this line. Hold off on that. We got all those oils into the glass, right? Now I'm gonna get some ice. Seltzer. Try to retain some fizziness. Give it a little lift. Take your garnish up top there and give it a straw. It's fun, it's delicious. Essentially, that is pretty close to a non-alcoholic Queen's Park Swizzle. It is a lot like a Queen's Park Swizzle with the alcoholic parts taken out of it, but it is just as refreshing and enjoyable and light and there's a process and it's pretty and uh, you know, you could do it on crushed ice if you wanted to. I don't know what I did with the garnish here. My thought was that I was gonna like go down and line the inside of the glass. So there you go, do something like that, that's fun. But I do think the lime oil is really, uh, the, from the peel, is really helping this drink a lot. It adds so much of a new dimension to the kind of tartness to it. It adds this floral element, this, uh, I sometimes think of it as tasting a little bit like the natural version of Fruit Loops. There's only like a half an ounce of simple in there. It's pretty dry. What do you think? 
Mm. Mm -hmm. The mint is um, delicious. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. It's almost a lemonade. It's almost a limeade. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's refreshing. It's light. It's effervescent. Looks pretty. It's minty. It's got real ingredients in it. If I was gonna make a non-alcoholic cocktail, I'd probably make something like this, and I did. What I'm trying to do here is create new things from existing ingredients, or from ingredients I have lying around, right? Which is kind of what like a mixologist or a bartender usually does. Like a little of this, a little of that, a little of this. Oh, we got something. Let me try something fun here. I'm gonna try something fun. I got it, this is gonna be great. Wouldn't mind a little fresh ginger. Didn't we have some upstairs? I'm just gonna peel this so I can make a couple of little ginger discs. I'm just gonna make a bunch and then we'll figure out how many to use after that, okay? Some ginger wedges, like so. But we're just gonna do like a drop. Water will be fine. I'm gonna use a splash of seltzer because that's what I have. Just to kind of work that honey into something. Muddle the honey and uh, ginger together. Fresh ginger is a little different than a ginger syrup, so you might want to do a syrup because it's easier, but this should be much hotter. Let's see where we're at there with just the honey, seltzer, and the ginger. My rules say I'm allowed to use a very small amount of spirits uh, that will result in no increase above 1%. So we're gonna use a atomizer of absinthe, just a spray. Honey and absinthe and ginger. Do I actually want some lime or lemon? I don't think I actually do. Okay, some ice. We'll stir that all up. Now I'm gonna put the chinota in there. Muddled ginger might be a bit awkward to drink, but we'll do our best. Ooh, that's good. Ooh. The vanilla from the Chidota marries up with the uh, ginger in a really pleasing way. They are really fun together. Man, I actually really like that. I wanna put just a scotch of lime juice in. It's like a lime wedge, you know. I'm pretty pleased with that. It's got moderated ginger heat, but ginger flavor alongside this vanilla from the Chinota. The lime juice kind of amplifies those volumes. It turns them up. It kind of mellows into this chocolatey, gingery thing. It never gets heavy. It's never very, very sweet. It's all very light. It's very nice. I think that I would like a version of this that does not have the ginger pulp in there. So we could work on that. You could juice ginger, take ginger, throw it in a juicer and get some fresh ginger juice and put like, I don't know, a couple bar spoons or something like that. It's gonna be incredibly intense flavor. And then you won't have ginger pulp all over the place. A ginger syrup, I mean, the best way to make ginger syrup super hot is to add ginger juice to it. And the thing of that though, is that we don't really wanna add more sweetness to this. So add ginger to it. You can muddle it. I don't love the way the pulp is working, but it was great to test it out. I think ginger juice is the way to go. That's a winner. I like that drink. The vanilla ginger interplay is really fun. Probably would be good for a little mint as well, but that was my last piece of mint, so. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. What are you gonna name it? Did I name the last one? No. Let's name this one first. Where do you think the epicenter in Brooklyn is of like the no ABV movement? Probably Williamsburg. Call that a Williamsburg swizzle? This one? Called it Park Slope Swizzle. That's I think Park Slope are. sounds better yeah. anyway because it goes to Queens Park. Yeah, it's a Park Slope Swizzle. Slizzle? Park Slope Swizzle, which is tough to say. And that is a ginger blossom. Okay. We got a huge mess here in front of me. I do look like I'm about to serve some omakase with these guys. <laughs> I kind of love that. What do you think we give me an idea here? Like, where should we go from here? We've done something like a minty long drink. We've, We've done, done a minty and a ginger. Can we do a tiki drink? Mm thinking about this for a second here. All right, I'm gonna build this in the glass as well. This is, as you probably know by now, tonka bean. And you know what? If we're making cocktails for like a fancy bar, particularly a place that's going to be doing non-alcoholic tiki cocktails, or you, we just found out you can get these on Amazon somehow. Yeah, we found um, them on Amazon. So we'll put a link up there. Be careful with them. I'm not supposed to let you buy them. I'm gonna split it and then... Tonka bean is a pretty legendary ingredient. I'm gonna kind of macerate that in Angostura bitters. Just enough to cover the bottom of the glass and it looks like that's like six dashes. I'm gonna try a half an ounce of Borgiago. 
Rajat, I don't know. Everybody corrects me. The French correct me. The Americans correct me. Oh, I'm sorry, a whole ounce. That's what I poured. <laughs> I'm stumped. I need alcohol. I don't know what else I can do. I want more going on in that glass. A little fresh cinnamon, tonka bean. We don't need this probably for a while. Getting some real aromas here. Problem is, mm, 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 mm. it's not gonna be stupid intense though. I'm not sure I'm gonna add lime juice, but I am gonna juice some lime juice and test it. I'm adding lime juice, at least half an ounce. A half an ounce of simple because there's like not gonna be a lot of body here right now. Ice. My seltzer. Garnish it with two cinnamon sticks and a sprig of mint. It's a riot of flavors. The cinnamon, the tonka, it has this very warm and inviting, honestly, I hate to use this word, but exotic sweetness to it. My imagined sense of what a Polynesian or tropical drink might be, it does feel like that. It has such a number of spices in it, from the Angostura, which brings in all of these Allspice mainly. Cinnamon, a little lime juice wakens things up. We've got tonka in there, which brings like this chocolate and vanilla, caramel. Really, truly a unique flavor, actually. You can say it's like those things, but actually what it's like is tonka bean. And orgeat, we have another almond in there. It's kind of a nut party. Tonka really stays with you. The flavor keeps coming back again and again and again. There's echoes of it that stay in your mouth. I've never tasted anything like this. Do you like it? I love that. <laughs> I love that. This is one of my favorite drinks you've ever made. I do think if you put, what spirit would you add to this? Rum. <laughs> I don't know, almost it's begging it. for uh, rum, even a little rum. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd lose a seltzer. You, you can't do it now because there's seltzer in it, but you lose the seltzer and you make it rum. The thing it's missing is mouthfeel. It has no mouthfeel. If this drink was made with rum, it would have mouthfeel, it'd have texture. This is still thin. You know, that's the one thing I was gonna criticize it about is that it doesn't have the, like the, you can't chew on it the way you can like a daiquiri or a Mai Tai. It just won't get there because it's based in water. I don't know what to call it. What is that thing called? I like the Jungle Cruise. I'm gonna call it the backside of water. I don't have a better name for it. I gotta leave some for Meredith. So here's the thing about all these non-alcoholic cocktails. One, I think you can get a lot more bang for your buck out of like Italian style sodas, which are available in, I'm gonna put links up to them, than you will out of this stuff. This stuff, I don't know. I mean, I'll put links to it if you want it, but I really can't imagine you why you would want this. And I hate to say that about anything. Uh, I don't, I love saying that about stuff. I don't wanna throw anybody under the bus who's trying in earnest. I just don't think that this stuff has like a use. I really can't figure out what you're supposed to do with it. it mixes poorly like it just sucks and i think that if your goal is to create an interesting thing to drink that's not alcoholic well one somebody's done a lot of that work for you like these italian style sodas i'm sure there are some fantastic like independently craft brewed sodas or whatever try yourself a fentiman's cola that's a really interesting take on cola bitters and soda is honestly a great place to go you know you can achieve those flavors just using the stuff that you have around probably i bet basil could make some really good non-alcoholic cocktails basically mix fresh ingredients work in small portions and, and build towards something and just about anything can become a cocktail you know another place to look at for non-alcoholic cocktails that i didn't cover here is like temperance there's a whole school of temperance cocktails from the temperance movement this soda fountain that people used to gather around to get stuff from the soda jerk kind of grew out of that the temperance movement and there's a lot of really complicated non-alcoholic cocktails out there cocktails that you know shakes smoothies that kind of stuff all right guys that's it for today thank you so much for coming on this journey this journey with me into the world of non-alcoholic cocktails. I will be back very soon with another episode of How to Drink. Until then, you will find me on all of these social media places, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Patreon, 
Instagram, but also, hey, we got a podcast now. It's called Midnight Local. It's Meredith and I staying up all night, hanging out and talking about watching movies and culture pop stuff. And uh, you'll find it at midnightlocal.com or youtube.com slash midnightlocal or wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, I will hope to see you over there. And if not, I'll see you back here on another episode of HTD. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Here are four more episodes of How to Drink or possibly a link or possibly a place to subscribe for you to peruse because I've been making this show for 40 billion years. I've been here on YouTube waiting for you to find me. And you finally did, you lucky duck. Get to work. See you guys next time on HTD. <laughs>